and the wee hours of the morning, Canon teased that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is going to be announced on November the 2nd. At the same time, Canon rumors said that unreleased specs for the Canon EOS R6 Mark II are pointing to this being one beast of a camera. Beast, huh? Details coming up, but first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. As I reported earlier this morning, Canon China teased the Canon R6 Mark II on their Weibo site, indicating that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II will be announced on November the 2nd. That's this coming Wednesday. The exact time and location of the announcement hasn't been released. However, after this teaser, Canon Rumors said this. We also want to add that we've been told that there are some selling points on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II that haven't been reported yet and make the camera a beast. Canon Rumors goes on saying, we don't mind surprises on announcement day, but those sorts of specs will likely leak out over the next day or two. Selling points that make this a beast of a camera? Hmm, what could they be? I wonder if they're referencing what I leaked last week about the Canon EOS R3 having a backside illuminated stacked sensor, the same sensor found in the R3 or a slight variant of. And if you want to watch that video, this one right here, I have a reliable source, trustworthy source, somebody I've known for a very long time telling me that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is definitely going to have a backside illuminated stacked sensor. Got it validated, but nowhere else has anybody really talked about this, but with the exception of a SobiNet. Although they don't indicate that this has been validated at this point, they're just talking about, and there is much conjecture on the web, but I'm wondering, because if it is a backside illuminated stacked sensor on a camera that costs about $2,500, that could potentially be a big deal. Because a backside illuminated stack sensor gives us, well, it's the foundation for many improvements. Low light performance, better ISO range, better dynamic range, better color performance. This could be the foundation for many improved other capabilities. But if it's not the backside illuminated stack sensor that Canon Rumors is referring to, what could it be? Let's take another look at the rumored specs to date on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. One important note here is that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II has been prototype tested since August of 2022. We also have multiple confirmed reports of the Canon EOS R6 being in people's hands, that people have it. They've actually got the 135mm f1.8 image stabilized USM and L series lens. So this is far from an aberration. Now again, when it comes to the sensor in this camera, it's supposed to be 24 megapixels. And what is largely believed to be true is that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is going to have the sensor, that 24 megapixel sensor, that's going to be based on what's inside the Canon EOS R3. It's going to have in-body image stabilization in terms of continuous shooting, 12 frames per second mechanical. But this is where we could see something that's mind-boggling or something that is, well, part of making it a beast. Let's pause right here. 12 frames per second mechanical. I know what you're thinking. This is not making it a beast in any way whatsoever. The R5, the R6 had that. The R10 and the R7 had up to 15 frames per second mechanical. But it's the electronic here. This is what we're not seeing here. Electronic, what could it be? Well, the R7 and the R10 can go up to 30 frames per second. 23, 30 frames per second electronic. Now their buffers give you maybe about a second before the buffer just bogs down, you can't shoot anymore, and it does take a while for that buffer to clear. But what could the R6 Mark II do? Could it have much faster buffer with much more PCIe lanes so it can just move a lot more information a lot quicker? Could it push to 30 frames per second? Could it push to 40 frames per second continuous still shooting? I don't know, but it's one of those areas where I could see the potential for unreleased specifications, which is the case here, we don't have the electronic shooting rates to make this partially a beast of a camera. Looking back at our list here, in terms of video specifications, we see that it can do 4K, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second without cropping, 4K, 50, and 60 with a crop. But there's nothing here that's really revolutionary. Sure, Canon Log 3 and HDRPQ is nice, but do you really see a sense here that we could make this a beast of a camera on the video side of things with just a 24 megapixel sensor? 6K over sample 4K would be nice, but I don't see anything here that shouts out revolutionary or anything that could turn this into a beast of a camera. There aren't any specs here that really capture my imagination. Capture my imagination in any way to get me guessing as to something 
really amazing. And sure, yes, they can bring back all I, but even that in itself isn't revolutionary. And sure, they could do raw video, 6K raw video. But again, even that isn't revolutionary, although it might make it a bit of a beast of a camera. The only thing potentially from the video side of things that could turn this into a bit of a beast of a camera, along with electronic and a BSI stack sensor, could be unlimited recording. Removing that record limit and the overheat limit, allowing you to record for as long as you want at 6K up to 60 frames per second or 6K up to 30 frames per second. Unlimited, raw, without any overheating. But then that would kind of step on the shoes of the Canon EOS R3, wouldn't it? Dual SD card slots, nothing revolutionary there. They could put in dual CF Express card slots, but we know that's not going to happen. Let's be honest with ourselves here. And no other major changes to the body of the EOS R6. Could we potentially see a new autofocus system like Sony did with the A7R5, giving us a much more intuitive AI-based deep learning autofocus system? The, the autofocus system in the R6 is already based off of deep learning, but could they have gone a little bit further? Could they have tuned it and maybe even brought out quad pixel autofocus? So this new sensor, could it have quad pixel autofocus? Perhaps. And one other thing we haven't talked about is the image processor. Could Canon be unveiling a new image processor in this camera, the Digic 11, instead of the Canon EOS R1? That is potentially one area where we could see some major improvements. Whenever you can take more data and process more data, store more data, you have the ability to raise the floor, raise capabilities across the camera. Backside illuminated stack sensor, new autofocus system, improved image processor. These are the foundations for what could be potentially a beast of a camera. And if we really bump up those frame rates for continuous shooting past 30 frames per second or even up to 30 frames per second with a fast enough buffer, yeah, potentially this could be a beast of a camera, certainly over what the Canon EOS R6, the Mark I was. There is a chance that we could have a new power system in this. Maybe we could have Mr. Fusion taking us back to the future. Okay, now I'm just being silly, but I'm wondering what about this camera, undisclosed specs, unreleased specs that could make this a beast of a camera. I keep going back to anything that I'm thinking of that would really make this a beast is gonna be based off a BSI stack sensor, the sensor that's found in the Canon EOS R3. A quad pixel autofocus would be nice, but to me, that doesn't make it a beast. But if you take a BSI stack sensor, quad pixel autofocus, you take a new image processor, you take much faster continuous shooting and a new autofocus system, then yeah, this could turn it into a beast of a camera. But at this point, I'm starting to just conjecture. There's no real basis or foundation or validation. What do you think? What do you think it could be? Or for you, looking at buying a camera, what would take the EOS R6, the current version on the market, the Mark I, and turn it into a beast of a camera from your, view, from your viewpoint? And maybe collectively together, we can come together and kind of flush out what this beast of a camera, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, could be. I've got my phone close by today because I've got my sources and they're waiting. They're, they're waiting for news to trickle out. We've gotten several bits of information out today. We've got this post by Canon Rumors talking about a beast of a camera from previously undisclosed specs. But we also have this, this post on Canon's Weibo site, Canon China, saying that it's going to be announced on November the 2nd. And what usually happens is, because it's still pretty early in the morning, at 6 o'clock as the time I'm recording this, is likely these will spawn other sources to come forward as they wake up, as they crawl out of bed, to come forward with validation or additional leaks to help us identify what it is, what it is about this Canon EOS R6 Mark II that could potentially be a beast of a camera. If you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors and whatever validation I get relating to these new specifications for the Canon EOS R6, please go ahead and subscribe, but make sure you choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified so that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. Saves you from scanning and scrubbing all those Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, your favorite websites, translation sites from the sites in Asia, and of course your favorite YouTube channels. And while I'm not saying don't follow your favorite websites and YouTube channels, but when you're in a pinch, when you're in a rush, I cover all the major camera news for all the major brands. So go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I can guarantee you another video is coming out later today. I don't know when that's going to be. It really depends on when we're getting validation. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.